Hi everyone, welcome back to Waterhouse Ford. Well, as I said in my last video, it's been a long time since we since we last did a video. I'm glad to say that we now have one, and uh, well, this is it. So, what we're going to do today, we're going to uh, well, I'm going to reinstall the back axles. So, put the uh, brake backing plates on, um, put the axles in, and the the most important part of this job is getting the clearance between the two axles correct and that's done with a set of shims which sit uh, behind the brake backing plate and there's no way to know uh, what size shims to put in. We know what size was in there before uh, but of course we've completely dismantled the, the whole thing now we put new gaskets in um, so there could be, and there inevitably will be, some difference in, in, that, uh, in, in, in the size of the shims required. So what I'm going to do, I've got two, a couple of new shims. I'm going to put the new shims in. Uh, we then need to measure the play between uh, the two axles, and uh, uh, that'll be uh, the next video. I'll show you how to do that. Um, and unfortunately, if it's not right, you have to basically take them out. Uh, take the, all the you know, take the whole axle out and uh, replace the shims or put more shims in or less shims in whatever the case may be uh, to try to get that play to within the right tolerance. Um, as I said, that'll be the topic of the next video. All I'm going to do today is basically install uh, both axles and show you how to do that, and uh, and then we'll stop there. And then the next video will be the setting of the play. Uh, between the two axles and making sure we've got the right amount of play. You need some, um, but you don't want to have too much either, so um, we've got to get that right. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video and uh, I'll see you before the end. Uh, I'll come, out, come and have a chat with you again before the end of the video. Okay, so here we are. We've um, hopefully got everything that we need. We've got the uh, brake backing plate, we've got the axle. Now from previous videos, you remember we, we uh, replaced this washer, replaced the spring, um, and that was the main thing. Well, well, we also cleaned up this shaft here and uh, the, the bush that goes inside there. On the axle, all that we've done is install these sure seals. Uh, the bearings are still okay, so, but the seals were leaking, so we installed the sure seal as a backup to, to that seal. Um, and then what I've got here, I've got these uh, Agriline shims, axle shims. Now what I'm going to do for the shims, I'm going to, so I've got four of these, I've got two in this in this pack and, and then I've got another pack. I'm going to put these two, uh, I'm basically going to put two on each side to start with and then we'll have to measure the play and decide whether that's too many or if it's not enough. If it's not enough, I've got the old ones that we can use to pack it and uh, to, to build it up. And then I've got two half shaft gaskets as well. Uh, you do need two per side. Um, so I've got, I've got four of those, so obviously two for this side and two for the other side. So let's get started. Um, the basic um, procedure will be to get the backing plate on. To do that, we need to get, the, we need to get it onto the half shaft. Um, because obviously everything has to sit on, on, on those studs, these studs here. So we're going to get that on, then we go, uh, and we're going to get all in the right order, and then we're going to put it on the tractor, and then obviously bolt it up. But it's reasonably straightforward. Um, now the first thing we need is a, is a gasket. Now, bear in mind I said that we're going to have to take this apart, well we might have to take it apart again, if the shims are not enough or too much. So we're definitely going to be putting grease on these gaskets because we've got a very high likelihood of needing to take them off again. So the easiest way to do that, I think, and the quickest way is to uh, put a little bit of grease on this surface here to start with. You don't need a lot. It's just enough to create a film, basically. Um, and of course, you don't need it on every single inch of the surface. You just need enough uh, that it'll squeeze out or squash out. But most importantly, to prevent the gasket from 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 sticking to the surface um, in case we need to take it off. And that, that's the main thing. 
The other thing it absolutely helps with is holding everything in place whilst you're installing. So, not a bad thing all around. Okay, so that's, that's enough there. So we'll get that gasket on. Hopefully that fits. It's a very thin paper gasket, so you do need to be careful. It gets a little bit hung up on the thread, so just uh, tease it on without tearing it. Is a quite a tough fit. You kind of have to stretch the gasket a bit to get it to go over the threads. Order, just um, for interest sake, the order is uh, you've got a gasket, then the brake backing plate, then the second gasket, and then the shims. So the shims go on last. The shims right up against this surface here. Um, yeah, so, and the point is the gasket needs to seal on both sides of the brake backing plate. You've got a gasket on each side of the brake backing plate. So let's get a bit more grease on here. Again, just to stop this gasket from sticking to the brake backing plate. And that ought to do it. Okay, I'm just going to coat the cloth. That. <coughs> As I said, paper gasket on each side of the brake backing plate, so we know it's just an easy way to remember it. But a paper gasket on each side. shot here. Well, not really. It's just... There we go. Hopefully that helps. Now we need the paper gasket. Second one. And again, this will be just nice and gentle just to get it over the threads without tearing it.
again. Left two. Now it's less important now, but I'm going to put grease on this side as well. Obviously, what's running up against this side is the actual shims, and they loose anyway. Well, they will come off anyway, but for consistency, we'll just put a bit of grease on this side as well. As the doctors always say, if it's not going to do any harm, it'll definitely, it definitely won't hurt. Sorry, if it's not going to do any good, it won't hurt. Okay. And then, as I said, I'm going to put two shims on. Um, I don't remember, I don't recall now what size these are as in what thickness. Um, they did tell me, but I've forgotten now. I'll need to look it up. I might, if, I, if, I, if I remember, I'll put it in the comments on the video. But to be honest, they are, well, they look reasonably thick to me, so this might be too much. But we're going to have a go. And uh, let's hope that that's okay. Right, I'm going to put a very thin layer of grease on this surface, uh, really just, just to help take it apart if we need to. Uh, almost oil thin layer. Right, let me just adjust the camera again. Okay, there we go. Now the other thing that obviously is going to happen that's going to happen here is we're going to be pushing the brake cross shaft into that bush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a blob of grease on there or in there as well. We previously put oil in here when we installed it, but I think it's not going to hurt to have a little bit of grease in there. So. Right, I think that'll. I think we're ready to uh, try and install this. And hopefully, I can do it all in one. The half shaft is now engaged with the crown gear. You can feel that as I'm putting it in. This shaft needs to come back a bit. And we need to find the right holes for this to go into. It's not lining up. Okay. <coughs> I can. I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but I can hear the diff moving there. So I know that that's engaged properly. Now we just need to get the shaft in, and that goes 
not that. Okay. Now the interesting thing is that looks like it's um, Oh, well, that's so. What I'm looking at, I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Let me just show you. Uh, well, first of all, let me just clean my hands. Okay, so first of all, if you look at that, the dog that engages the brake pedals, this, that shaft, the end of the cross shaft there, feels to me like that should be sticking out a bit more. In other words, that it should be more like that. So you've got a bit of a gap here. I don't know that. I, I will need to check when we actually put the brake pedals on. But that means that over here, let me just zoom in, adjust the camera. There. So where the cross shaft goes into the bell, the um, trumpet housing, over here, that should, that, um, this knuckle is adjustable, so we, we measured what we thought it was, which was, I think it was 33 millimeters in one of the previous videos, uh, to the end of that shaft, which is how we set that. But obviously if this needs to stick out a little bit, then that's away from the bell housing, so uh, the trumpet housing. So look, we're just going to have to, for now we'll leave it. We know it's adjustable. I'm not going to set the spring until we're finished, okay? Once we've got all the brake pedals and everything, and everything's aligned, then we set that spring so that it's pushing up nicely against the, the backing plate here. And uh, Right, so now we need to get all these nuts on. So let me just get the camera back to where we need to be. Oh, sorry, you couldn't see any of what I was just talking about. So this spring here, where is it? That spring there, I'm going to leave that till last and adjust that washer back up against the backing plate once everything else is installed. So that's kind of the last thing I'm going to do. Right, we'll get... we we'll move the camera now because now we're going to put... put the nuts on at the back here. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm only going to put every second nut on because, again, we may need to take it all off. So there's six nuts, so we'll put three on, and that'll be enough to hold it in place and keep it all nice and tight. And then once we've measured it and we're absolutely sure that the that we've got the right amount to play, then we'll talk them. Well, we're going to talk them anyway now, but when we add those extra three nuts, sorry, when we've got everything lined up then and, and set, then we'll add the extra three nuts. So what I'm going to do now, these three nuts, I'm just going to torque them. I'm just going to torque them to about 35 Newton meters for, for 
for now. That should be enough for, for what we're doing. Okay. I'll take them up a little bit higher because that seems, no, actually that's probably all right. Actually, I'm going to take them up to 40 because that seems very loose to me. To be honest, it should be working in foot pounds because obviously these are imperial nuts. I'll take it up to 40, 45 ish. Foot pounds and see what that gives us. Okay, that's about where we want to be. And as you can see, that's just a little bit tighter than I was able, or not able, but to where I took it to with the spanner. So I'm comfortable with that, and that should be enough for for setting. Okay, now we will have a little bit of play in this axle. You can see it there, and you can hear it. What we want to do is we want to pull that out. And bear in mind, we've not changed the bearings on here, so they've not been disturbed. So they, they're okay. Now what we do, we're going to basically put the other side, do exactly the same thing on the other side. The two, the ends of the two axles will probably touch in the middle, in fact they should touch, but that end play is what we're going to be measuring, and as I said, that'll be the next video. So, look, I think that's it for today. Um, I'm going to put the other side on, and then we'll set up uh, the next video where we do all the measuring and adjusting to, uh, to get the correct end play. Right, well, there you go, that's how you uh, reinstall the back axles. Now, the interesting thing, I've put the other side on, um, and I can see immediately that we don't have enough shims. So we're going to need to remove both sides um, and use some of the old shims and increase. Now the reason I know that is basically there's absolutely no play uh, when you tighten up the other side. So the, that play that I showed you on the other side, that's gone. Uh, and what that means is that the axle on the other side is pushing right up against that one. And in fact, when you turn the, um, the axle on one side, you can actually hear uh, one axle squeaking against the other, which is clearly not good. So I've, um, what I've done, I've slackened off the bolts just so there's no pressure. Um, and I'm going to leave it like that. And probably tomorrow I'll get back in to the workshop here and we'll get, to get those loosened off, pack them a little bit more. Um, I need to measure the old shims because I'm not sure if they're all the same size. If they are, great, then we'll put uh, equal um, amounts on either side. If they're different, we'll have to try and match them up to try and get as close as possible. Basically, you want, you want your shimming to be as equal as possible on both sides, uh, but it doesn't have to be. Um, you can have one side slightly uh, can have slightly a little bit more uh, packing than the other side if it's necessary, but ideally you have you have them equal. Um, and what we're looking for is uh, essentially a measurable amount of play between between the two axles or movement in in the axle. Um, I think it's somewhere it's up to eight thou uh, of movement. And I've got I do have a dial gauge. Um, uh, it's I need to make another frame for it, um, so I will be doing that as well. Um, but to be honest with you, it's yeah. Well, well, I'll see whether I video that or not. I haven't I haven't decided whether to video that or not. I'll have a look at that tomorrow, and if uh, if I think it'll be interesting, I'll video it. Uh, but yeah, the good thing is the the back axles are now on. Um, as I say, we just need to pull them more quickly, pack them a little bit more, put them back, and hopefully that'll be enough. To, um, to give us the play that we need. So look, I hope that's been interesting. I hope that, um, I know I'm very pleased to finally have uh, made some more progress on the tractor and uh, it's really, it look, it feels good and it looks good. 
to, uh, to have the axles back in again. Uh, once we've got all that done, the next job really will be to get the um, to get the brakes back in, get the drums back on, um, and then probably I, I don't know if I'm going to put the wheels on just yet. Um, obviously, they're, they're standing here; they have been for a while now. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to put them on yet because obviously we want to get into the uh, transmission case, and uh, it's probably going to be easier if the if the back wheels are not in the way. So probably I won't actually put the wheels on, but I certainly want to get the brakes and the drums on. And um, I'll also show you how to set those up as best we can uh, prior to putting the wheels on. Once you've got the wheels on, you drive it around a bit, then you can actually set the brakes properly. But you can do an initial setting with just the drums, and I'll show, I'll show you how to do that. So, um, look, thanks for watching. And uh, again, I hope to get another video out uh, this coming week. Um, so hopefully... We'll get uh, we'll get a bit of momentum going now, and we'll get um, we can keep that momentum up in the in, in the next few weeks. So um, yeah, look forward to the next one, and uh, see you then. Thanks for watching.